Hi, my name is Maxim M. Martineau, and I'm the young adult fantasy author of Kingdom of Exiles and the Frozen Prince, and I'm also an ASU graduate. And today, I'm here to do a workshop with you about creating authentic characters. Now, for me, characters make or break your story. Like, yes, there's world building. Yes, there's plot. And those can be beautiful and wonderful integral parts to a story. But characters make or break the whole thing for me. And so today, we're going to talk about what you can do to create relatable, interesting, authentic characters that have your readers flipping through all the way to the end as fast as they can. So um, for today's agenda, we're gonna talk about what makes a good character. We're gonna look at some examples from literature. We're gonna do a couple of activities from character profiles to interviews and backstories. And then we're just gonna talk about, you know, those examples in literature, what it means, and then we'll do a quick wrap up. So hopefully this is a fun little uh, workshop for you and let's get started. So what we're gonna talk about first is doing characters right. And what I mean by that is making them relatable. I mean, that's a word you're probably gonna hear a lot during this workshop, so hopefully it doesn't get too tiresome, but it's really, really important for your readers to see themselves in the characters. That's how they connect. That's how they form these really, really like stand relationships with them where they'll go out and do anything and ship like relationships and make everything bigger than life for them. Um, you can't have a story without characters and the best stories have the best characters. They're the ones who overcome obstacles. Um, they grow as people and their actions and choices create memorable and relatable journeys for all of their readers. Um, so what exactly makes a good character? It's more than just their physical attributes, though. I mean, we all like unique characters and, and like their attributes do play a role in that. And we will get into creating attributes. Um, but it's it's more about what's on the inside, you know, what's going on beneath the surface. What are they thinking about? Why are they making the choices that they make? What drives them forward and thus causes the plot to progress? Um, and, he, and especially if you write fantasy, it's even more than just like their superpowers, but we all want a character with cool superpowers, but usually there has to be some sort of check and balance. And it's more than just like being a vampire or, you know, having superhuman strength. So let's talk about three key things beyond the physical attributes and beyond the superhuman strength and beyond the vampire abilities and uh, kind of dive in deep. So first we're gonna talk about complexity. A good character has real life relatable problems, even in a fantastical setting. We all want those awesome powers and endless talents, but if your characters have no challenges or no, and like no conflict, then they can become flat and predictable. So then, you know, no one wants to read about the superhuman who never has any challenges, never has any problems, just flies by and like, it's not interesting. There's no, there's no give and take. So you need to understand what makes your character tick, what drives them forward, what's their backstory. These are all questions that help build a complex character. Um, second, we wanna make sure that your characters experience some kind of growth. Growth is pivotal for character development. As the plot progresses, so too should the character. Every challenge they overcome should shape them. And the obstacles should be tough. Like easy, easy obstacles and easy journeys. And they're just, they're boring. They're not going to have your, your readers like trying to figure out where the climax is and to see how everything resolves if there's just really no challenge to it. Um, Rocky Road, or pardon me, Rocky Roads uh, result in fantastic character growth. And as readers, we can often relate to those tough situations. You know, those trials are something that we experience in everyday life. Like the things that we obsess over and think about and try to overcome. And it, it doesn't just happen instantly. I mean, sometimes we wish it would, but it doesn't. And so if we can't find that relatable connection in the characters, if we don't see them struggling like we struggle, we just don't find them as interesting and we don't connect as deeply as we could. So we really want those characters to grow with their choices because then when they do finally surmount those obstacles, we as readers experience that same relief and joy alongside them. 
And finally, the third thing that makes a great character is individuality. So yes, <laughs> this comes to those distinguishable physical attributes and characteristics, everything from hair color and eye color to specific habits and mannerisms that are completely unique to that individual character. Uh, if one character tends to pick at their cuticles when they're nervous, you probably wouldn't assign that same habit to another character. You wanna create distinct, identifiable tics or like mannerisms that feel holistically, like pertain holistically to that one individual character. So let them be one of the few, if not the only one with that habit. This creates a unique individual and then readers can easily like differentiate between one character to the next character to the next character. Another pro tip is try your hardest not to give your characters all the same like name or the same sound, the same letter. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves is uh, Tolkien and Saruman and, and Sauron. And I and see, I can't even say them, but like that's less of an issue so much as that they're, the, they're both bad guys. They both have similar motives and they both start with the same sound. So it's, it can be very difficult to differentiate your characters if they all look and feel the same. So a few, I just gave you a bad example. So let's talk about some good examples. Um, especially in young adult literature, I feel like there are some really killer examples out there. Um, if you haven't read the book, that's okay. Uh, you can go out and either get the book yourself, highly recommend it for these examples, or just follow along because you don't need to read the book to understand <laughs> some of these key characteristics I'm gonna be uh, talking about. So first let's look at Kaz Brecker from Six of Crows. He wears gloves, which I won't, again, won't spoil alert too much, but it, his glove wearing ties into his backstory, which makes him super interesting. And it gives him so much depth and complexity. You know, he has questionable morals. He's incredibly cunning and intelligent and he walks with a cane. So like all of these things are super specific and identifiable, like his strengths, his sharp wit and his, his ability to strategize are equally balanced by his weaknesses. Um, hence the, uh, the glove wearing, if you know a little bit about him and his backstory and why he is who he is, is so much like a part, like his backstory is so much a part of why he is who he is. Um, another example is Star Carter from The Hate You Give. Star's character growth is phenomenal. I uh, highly recommend reading The Hate You Give if you haven't already. Her, the inciting event that happens is absolutely horrific. And then her character progression, how she deals with loss, how she starts to embrace her identity and rise up when she calls for injustice to be recognized and you know, uh, it's just, it's, it's incredible. I highly, highly, highly recommend reading it and specifically track Star's character progression because she really does become an entirely new character by the end of the book. And you see those trials and tribulations that she goes through and it, it's, an, it's impossible not to feel for her and not to want her to, to get everything she deserves. And that's what you want from your characters to feel like the journeys they're going on are resulting in a positive outcome. And another um, YA fantasy example, the star, um, hey, you give not YA fantasy, but Six of Crows YA fantasy. We're going to look at The Cruel Prince um, by Holly Black. And Cardan, or Cardan, depends on how you say it, is... <laughs> another really identifiable character uh, like Kaz he's his morality is like eh, it's, it's it's hit or miss and you don't know if he's good you don't know if he's bad you don't know do you love him do you hate him you kind of fluctuate throughout the whole story as his motives start to you know unfurl and you start to learn more about him and why he's making the choices that he is and that really progresses throughout the whole series but it does start with the first book the cruel prince and he's so angry and he's so full of conflict and he takes it out on the main character and then you find out why and it's just sort of this whole eye-opening experience which is again what you really want you want to have this interesting interaction and this interesting character development that is both surprising and exciting and then like, who hasn't been angry at someone and you find out it's really something that's going on inside of you and you're taking it out on someone else, right? This happens in our everyday life, which is why Cardan is relatable, even if it seems a little bit extreme from time to time. So 
a couple of just discussion questions for you to think about as we're going through it. You know, you might not have known those characters and that's okay. So think about some of your favorite characters from literature. You know, what makes them so relatable or interesting to you specifically? Do you see part of yourself in them? Do you recognize the journey? What is it about them that connects with you? And then another question to think about, because I personally really enjoy trying to understand villains in the literature. So do you think villains are as equally fleshed out as the main or secondary characters in books? Why or why not? Um, think about some of your favorite antagonists and why are they your favorite antagonists? Are they just straight evil or do they have their own driving force for why they're doing what they're doing? Is it a morally gray reason? Do you have to make the tough decision as to whether or not you like that villain because you know, you might not agree with what they're doing, but maybe maybe their backstory is complex enough and compelling enough that you kind of understand how they ended up there. So just think about that for a moment, you know, that villains are an interesting subset of character development and they're really worth a second, second thought. <laughs> and then uh, another thing to think about is out of all of those characters, antagonists or protagonists, what are some of your favorite characteristics or traits that span across all of them? You know, it doesn't have to be only in villains or only in protagonists, you know, good and bad. You know, why do those traits stick out to you? Again, do they resonate with you? Is there something about them that's similar to your own experience or your own journey? So now we're going to talk about, we're going to think about all of that. Think about what I just discussed. Think about those questions, sort of like mull them over in your brain. And we're going to take the next five to seven minutes um, to use the following worksheet about character profiles. And I want you to take a few minutes to list out any physical characteristics, you know, age, height, body type, hair color, eye color, you know, ethnicity, culture, you know, and then some, some additional traits. Are they bold? Are they shy, passionate, competitive, something, anything else? Um, talk about relationships, you know, family members, friends, enemies, any special talents. This is where you get to decide if they're a vampire, you know, if they're Superman, if they have any other magical abilities, or even just, you know, everyday stuff. Maybe they're fantastic at math or they're really good with the written word, you know, and what are their habits? Do they pick their nails? Do they twirl their hair? Like every YA character, <laughs> do they shuffle their feet? You know, the, what individual mannerism pertains to them specifically? And then of course, no character is a great character without their weaknesses. So list down any weaknesses they might have. Are they scared of spiders? It could be anything like, is there, is their magic limited? So they can cast one spell, but it, it, when they cast that spell, it's a physical drain on them and they are down for six hours. You know, like what is the check and balance between your character? So then to continue on to really get that well-rounded, fleshed out character, you want to think about their internal conflict. This is a big one. Why do they want to accomplish what they want to accomplish? And what is that thing that they want to accomplish by the end of the story? So there's the external, which you should be noting as well what has to happen in the plot in order for them to overcome their internal conflict. So like Joe has to make it to the castle before dawn. That, that's, that's the external conflict. And what is he going to go through to make that happen? The internal is why, like, what is it? Like maybe there's some really dark, dark history with his parents. And if he gets to the castle, he can see them again or, or like rectify some wrong in his past. What is he, Indiv as the individual, what is he trying to overcome? And then, you know, any other miscellaneous details, you know, what's their favorite article of clothing, uh, like their fashion sense, where do they live, you know, that, that kind of stuff. So just take those few minutes now to go ahead and try and do a rough skeleton for this character. And then uh, we'll pick back up with the next section of this workshop. Okay, I hope you've got your character sheets good to go. Um, if they're not, that's okay. Uh, they can always be fleshed out at a later point. This is just really the starting point for your character anyway. Right now, they might be feeling a little two-dimensional. They're just words on a piece of paper, and that's okay. We're going to talk about how we can fully flesh them out now and make them a little bit more 3D. So the goal here is to make your characters feel like real people. Now that you've got this sheet, you can start to see how your person, um, for the sake of this lesson, uh, let's refer to them as Blake. 
Um, and we'll see how Blake takes shape. But sometimes simply writing down characteristics isn't enough to fully define who Blake is. So what can you do? You, if you want Blake to seem real, let's let's interview them. You know, remember the goal of creating authentic, believable characters is for your readers to envision them as real, actual people. So by interviewing Blake with some extraneous questions that might not have popped up on the character sheet that might cause a little bit of sort of on the fly thinking will help make them feel fully fleshed and make you understand how that character might react if these questions were presented to them in real life or if similar situations like sort of arise in the story or the the plot itself. Um, And it's important that when you're doing these interviews with your character to just really ground yourself in your character's mindset. Um, Refer back to your character sheet. Think about how they would actually respond, not how you would respond, but how your character, like Blake, would respond in this particular scenario. Use the parameters you've created to come up with answers that make sense for them. So let's give it a try. We're going to do another exercise here now that we've got the worksheet done. And we're going to think about some interview questions. So you can sort of come up with your own questions. Um, I'll, I'll list off a few here for you to think about, but don't limit yourself. Like the fun questions, the weird questions, those are almost the best questions. Um, not your like standard, like job interview questions. Like those might be helpful and you can certainly do them, but the fun and quirky ones often give us a different light into our characters. And again, help us paint them as real people. So like, an easy one would be like, what is your greatest achievement or what are you most proud of? If I'm Blake, this, this character, what is it that I've done? Even if it doesn't appear in the plot, that's another thing to think about is these questions could pertain to something in the backstory, which we'll get to later. Um, but these are all answers that your character will still have, even if they don't actually appear on the page. And that's okay. They don't have to appear on the page. You just have to know that these answers and these scenarios drive your character forward. So we have the greatest achievement, you know, what they're most proud of. Um, Another good question is what is your biggest regret? So again, like this might be kind of tie into the internal conflict. So you never know, get it. Think about what this could be for your character. You could also ask a funner one, like what's your biggest pet peeve? So um, if Blake's biggest pet peeve is nail picking, since we, we've used that example a few times and another character does that in the story, Blake should react negatively to it. And this helps flush out the character and make them believable because if I, my pet peeve is people cutting me off in traffic without using their blinker. <laughs> And if that happens, I always react, right? So if cuticle picking bothers Blake and someone does it in front of Blake, they should react. There should be, even if it's an internal, just like flinch, they should always react. So think about that. And on the flip side, you could also think about traits that your character might find most attractive. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical trait or something that they love or like that inspires the emotion love, but just something that they admire. Maybe they admire loyalty or honesty. And it when they see someone doing that, it sort of sparks this internal warmth. Um, another fun question, and I'm sure y'all have heard of this one as before, uh, if you could have lunch with one person, who would it be? So, and again, if you're writing a fantasy book, that, that character might be someone they don't even see in the book. And then you might even be inventing an entirely new character, but think about why they would want to have lunch with that person. Um, Another one is if your house was burning down, what's one object you'd save and why? Again, this, this kind of goes back to a backstory. It might not actually show up in the book itself or in the plot itself, but if there's that one key item that your character adores and would do anything to protect, that speaks to you know, something inside of them, like something about their personality. And that is really relevant to what happens in the story, even if that object doesn't appear in the story. Okay. So take a few minutes, answer some of those questions, and then we'll pick back up again and finally dive into the really meaty part of building an authentic character, which is creating a backstory. Okay, 
now that you've got your character sheet filled out and your backs or not, sorry, not your backstory, your character sheet and your interview questions filled out, one thing you can do to take it a step further to create an authentic character is to write a backstory. Now, this is the story behind the story. In other words, the backstory. So let's continue to use Blake as an example. Blake had a life before we, the readers, met them. They had a family and childhood, and we might not be aware of that, especially if the story that we're reading, if Blake's story takes place later in life, like in, in high school or in college, or if we're reading a YA fantasy, you know, 10 years down the line in the Magical Academy. Um, even if that doesn't exist on paper, backstories are crucial and highly important. Like us, our characters are shaped by choices. Um, and those choices that they made throughout the years, especially the early years, are largely dependent on who they are today and what happened to them in their past shapes their decision making in the present. So even if we don't see this, again, just to reiterate, even if we don't see this backstory on paper, creating that for your characters, taking a moment to take a step back and think about, you know, this, this before time helps make their actions and choices consistent and believable as they progress through the current story. So um, an example would be from one of my favorite um, mangas, graphic novel, anime, is Your Lie in April. So I will try my hardest not to spoil this for anyone watching who hasn't watched Your Lie in April or read Your Lie in April. Highly recommend it. Um, so it's, it's very popular, it's, albeit sad. And uh, Kosei Arima, Arima, I apologize for my mis potential mispronunciation there. Um, he's a talented pianist who's lost the ability to hear the piano while he plays post his mother's death. So while we do get snippets of his relationship with his mother throughout the series, little flashbacks, little moments, which are really brilliant and do highlight the backstory. Again, it's, it's all... It's all backstory. It doesn't actually happen in the current present plot. However, the trauma he suffered is con is like consistent with the growth that he has, and it's largely influenced by what happened from what happened in his past. I'm trying to to speak without giving away too much, so I apologize for the kind of circular language. But um, we the the big point is we don't actually see a lot of that that trauma. Um, we just sort of uncover it as the plot progresses. So everything he does from stating from playing the piano to the work he does as transcribing music is influenced by this past experience. And it's because of those experiences that we find his current actions and his decisions believable, his inability to play in the sense that he can play but not hear the music. And so he kind of, it kind of derails. And then when he starts to have this relationship with the violinist in this in the series, every time that she pulls him a step forward, he kind of takes a step back before also joining her that step forward. And it's really beautiful how it's all about him overcoming the loss of his mother and being able to, you know, have music again in his life. So this is backstories are really deep, they're really complex, and they don't always show up, but they're super important. So I want you to take a few more minutes now to think about what you can do for this character that you've started to create. You've got your character sheet, you've got your interview, and now we're gonna look at the backstory. So what can you do? What can you think about? What past experience potentially could alter either the current plot or drive the current plot or definitely um, affect the decision-making process of your main character. Remember, the story doesn't have to appear in your actual body of work, but it should be alluded to, and it certainly should drive your character's present-day choices. So what happened to your characters in the past that shaped who they are today? Think about that, how that experience shapes their decision-making process, and just take a few minutes to really, really dive deep and write a backstory. And now remember that the while the character sheet has some, some attributes and whatnot, your character might be a little bit different in the backstory. And that's because what happened in the backstory shaped the present day character. So maybe your what you detailed on the character sheet is that um, 
they're really closed off. Like they, they, they don't make connections well with other people. Um, maybe in the backstory they do, maybe they were a happy go lucky kid. And then something happened that caused them to completely shut down. So a little bit different than your character sheet, but still goes hand in hand with that current development. So just think about that and take a few minutes and then we'll be back to wrap things up. All righty. So you should have three really great documents now all about one character. You've got your character sheet, you've got your interview questions, and you've got your backstory. Now you don't necessarily have to do this for every character in the stories that you write, but definitely our main characters and probably your secondary characters. And even if you don't fully write it out like this every single time. You need to think about this every single time. I still recommend this exercise for all of your main characters all the time, just because it really gives you a chance to put yourself in your character's shoes so that when you do write them, it feels authentic and real. And it's there, there as in your character's voice coming through instead of your voice, trying to pick things together sort of at the last minute to make sense for the plot. If you do all of this legwork ahead of time, you're going to have a more concrete character who's relatable and authentic. And then that you'd almost create like a character driven plot because every time something happens, even if you've got the loose outline, when your character encounters, you know, point A, point B, so on and so forth, they're going to shape the direction of your journey because they have an idea of how they would respond in that particular moment to that particular obstacle. And that is what creates a truly exciting and relatable experience for your readers when they digest your work. So that's it for me. That's all I have to say for the, for the moment about creating authentic characters. And thank you again so much for joining me today. My name is Maxim N. Martineau. I'm a young adult fantasy author and an ASU graduate. And I live and breathe YA literature. And I really, really hope that you had fun today and that this gives you something to think about so that when you go out and write your own stories, which I can't wait to read, uh, you feel really confident in the characters you're creating. So again, thanks so much and uh, have a great day.